Hey, what's going on everybody? I know I say that like every time I make a video, I just kind of struggle with like starting out on videos and especially ending videos. They just kind of like cut off. I don't know, I'm not great at it. With the whole Pajoko family YouTube channel and Facebook page and stuff, I started that for the main reason of just being able to share God's word because that is what I'm passionate about. That's what I live my entire life for. And when you guys watch videos of me and Coco or me and Lance doing and marshmallow trivia or anything like that what we are showing you guys is how we live our life glorifying the Lord and sometimes it's fun and sometimes it's stupid it's just who we are I realized that I've kind of strayed away from sharing God's Word on this YouTube page which is so important to me so I'm gonna try my best to commit to getting one of these messages out to you guys every week probably on Wednesday and then we want to shoot one of our vlog style videos once a week as well which will post probably on Saturday what we're talking about today is why do we need to be saved. Why do we need a savior? And if you're not a Christian, I highly suggest that you watch this video because you made it ask that yourself. You might have say, well, you know, I live a good enough life. I, I'm not really worried about what happens after I die. But have you ever asked why do we need a savior? A lot of times we hear the gospel story about Jesus dying on the cross for us, and that is totally excellent, but it doesn't always answer that question of why do I need to be saved? Sure, we, we hear that Jesus died on the cross for our sins, but then after that, okay, so what? Let's take a look at why we need a savior and why sin is bad. So sin in the Bible is anything we do, think, or say that doesn't please God. That's really the most simple definition to put it, but let's be honest here. Have you ever asked the question, why is it bad? I mean, sure, we all pretty much like know that murdering is bad, lying is bad, stealing is bad, but what makes those little sins bad? Well, let's go back to Isaiah chapter six. So the verse in the Bible is super incredible. And this man named Isaiah has, a, has been given a vision of God. And in this vision, Isaiah sees just a glimpse of the goodness of God, of his glory. And he sees the train of the Lord's robe going around the entire temple. And here in verse two and three, it says, above him stood the seraphim and each had six wings. With two, he covered his face, with two, he covered his feet, and with two, he flew. And one called to another and said, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The earth is full of his glory. Now talk about a fantastic vision that Isaiah got to experience. And again, this is just a glimpse of the majesty of God. And it shows a little bit about how good God is, how strong God is, and how holy God is. If you've ever spent any time reading the Bible, you may have noticed that they talk a little bit funny. And I'm not talking about the these and thous and like the King James stuff. I'm talking about repeating the same thing they just said. In the, in the New Testament, a lot of times you'll hear Jesus say truly, truly, or verily, verily, depending on what translation you got. Or, or you'll see scriptures that say, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. And you're like, I get it. Why repeat these things? In the original Hebrew language, there was kind of a lack of punctuation. Sure, their voices, like when they talked, they were able to make emphasis and show excitement, but on the written down language, it was a lot harder. So what they did instead of punctuation was they used repetition. And that's why Jesus would say, truly, truly. That's his way of saying, look, what I'm about to say is important. And in the Bible, we see several characteristics and attributes of God. He is good. He is loving. But there is only one character of God that is repeated to the third degree. And that is that God is holy, holy, holy. God is majorly, undeniably, without question or hesitation, holy. That is who he is. And holiness means to be set apart. That's why when God instructs us, instructs us to live a holy life, he's telling us to be set apart from the world. We're in the world, but we're not of it. We do things differently. We, we serve God and we don't do what the world does. We are set apart. And the reason that sin is bad, listen to this, the reason that sin is bad is because it is in direct violation of the character and nature of God. It is treason against the holiness of God. It is a total misrepresentation of who God is 
at the very core of his being. He desires all of us to know him and to hate sin. He has a wrath against sin. God does. But here's another problem. Sin brings death. Romans 6, 26 makes it extremely clear when it says the wages of sin is death. So that's one thing, but then there's another, there's another problem in our life. If we have just one sin in our life, we deserve the death penalty. And Romans 3, 23 tells us this. It says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, which means since sin deserves death and we have all sinned, we are now under the death penalty. We all deserve the death penalty. You could even tell one lie and then go the rest of your life being good, but you are still deserving of the death penalty. And here's the thing, you are actually not as good as you think that you are. Now, I'm not trying to tear you down, just listen to this. In Matthew chapter five, Jesus says this. He says, you have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder or you will be liable of judgment. But I say to you, but Jesus says this, that everyone who is angry with his brother is liable of judgment. If you've been angry with your brother, you have committed murder. And it doesn't stop there. Jesus doesn't stop there. He says, if you even look at a woman with lustful intent, you've already committed adultery with her in your heart. And so you can't tell me that you haven't been angry. You haven't looked at somebody with lustful intent. Sin is easier than you think that it is. And we are not as good as we want to feel that we are. And that's kind of a hard truth to swallow, but it is true. We are all deserving of death. We are all objects of God's wrath. But don't stop listening yet because this isn't a doom and gloom. This isn't a hellfire and brimstone message. This is the message of good news. Because listen, God has other plans for us. God has other plans for you. God desires no man to die. God wants each and every single one of us to spend eternity in heaven with him, to know his goodness, to know his love, and to live in that love. And in the Old Testament, to deal with sin, they would oftentimes make all these sacrifices. But according to Hebrews 10.4, these animal sacrifices weren't actually enough to forgive sins. They were just a covering and they pointed to the significance of our sin and showed us that we needed a better sacrifice than just an animal. We needed a perfect sacrifice. And that's where Jesus comes in. Now guys, this is very important. Jesus is 100% man and he's 100% God. I know that this goes against our human math and everything, and I would love to go into richer detail about this, and I will someday, but for right now, I have a great friend, Jason Camacho, on YouTube who has a lot of content on this one subject. So if you want to learn about this more, I highly suggest go to Jason Camacho's YouTube channel because you will love it. Jesus is 100% man, and he's 100% God. And the first thought when we hear the gospel message for a lot of people is, man, God is kind of cruel for killing his one and only son just to unleash his wrath on sin, just to justify the sin stuff. But when we say that, we are neglecting the fact that Jesus is God himself. God came to earth to sacrifice himself for what we did. He didn't have to do this. He could have let us be objects of wrath. He could have let us experience death in sin. But instead, God said, no, I love these people so much. God loves you so much that he himself came here to die on the cross for our sins, just so that we can have a blessing and, and removal of sin from our life. God did that for us. And Jesus came to earth and he was tempted with sin, but he never sinned one time. He never, he never violated the holiness of God. He never went against the character and nature of the Lord. Jesus was always, always, always perfect. And he still died. The one man on earth who didn't deserve death died for us so that we can cash in on his blood. Because listen to this, because Jesus died and because he rose again, we now can cash in on what he did for us. And it will not just cover our sins. The blood of Jesus doesn't just cover our sins. It totally removes it from our life. And this is why we need a savior because Jesus did for us what we can't do for ourselves. Guys, I want you to know, you cannot earn this grace. You can't do anything to show God that you're worth having your sins removed. 
you cannot be good enough to get into heaven. You cannot be good enough to have your sins forgiven. You can't be bad enough. Jesus will respond to all who call on the name of Jesus. But the only way into heaven, the only way to have your sins removed is through the blood of Jesus. You can't do it on your own. Jesus paid the price. He was the only sacrifice worthy enough to cash in on. And not only this, but now through Jesus, we are actually free from the bondage of sin and death, which means we no longer have to walk according to sin and death. We no longer have to do what it beckons us to do. And if you're one of those guys who want to be like a super good person, but you don't want to follow the Lord, let me tell you this, your efforts right now are in vain, but through Jesus, they will have eternal reward. You can never be as good as a person as when you are following in Jesus, in his will, in his steps. And in Christ, we have freedom. And that is why we need a savior. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it wasn't too long. And I will try to have one of these out for you guys every week. See you next time.